about narcissistic mothers and why they need to put themselves in the middle of your life, why they need to insert themselves in your life and make it all about them. What are they doing? They are, so there's one particular thing I've been thinking on, and that is the way they always seem to weave their way into your life from the time you're a child to the time you all the way as long as you know them. The way it's not just weave their way into your life like in a healthy, normal, your mom can be in your life kind of way. It's in this way that makes it turn the focus back to her. The way that they weave their their self into your life to then turn your focus onto her from the time you're little all the way to when you grow up, <laughs> right? And, and, and then some. So um, why, why do they do this? Why do they need to like check up and check in with you and make it about them instead of letting you individuate and have your own life? So, and how do they do it? There's, it's, it's tricky talking about the moms <laughs> because, you know, the motherhood is sacred thing because, Moms are supposed to love you unconditionally because narcissistic mothers give you the false image of what love is based on how they love, right? And it's hard to then say, well, that mother doesn't love their child or that mother is not being good to their child because oftentimes the narcissistic mom is following by the book according to how parenting should look for modern parenting. But what they're doing is taking the information just like they do with psychology and twisting it to suit their needs. They're basically, from the time you're little, they are controlling everything. They're controlling your interactions with other people, what you think about the world around you. They're not allowing you to experience life from an individual viewpoint, from being yourself and experiencing life and then coming to them with, mommy, why does this do this? Mommy, this hurts, help me. Mom, you know, like they're not allowing for a natural mother-child relationship. What they're doing is conducting you at, like a puppet, really, and and in filling your head, preloading information into your head. They're, they're telling you things before they happen. They're, they're controlling the narrative through directing things and controlling things off into the future. They think they're clever about this, but if you watch, it's really easy to see. They might say something like, gosh, it sure is cold out. Like say they know you're going to go on a hiking trip with your, with your father and you know, and so they might be like, gosh, it sure is cold out a week ahead of time. Sure wouldn't want to be out on out on the woods right now. Whoo, certainly is cold in order to ruin the trip ahead of time. Like, so does that, that's like a really basic example, but they do this in these like slippery little ways that you don't notice where you would, if you look at it from afar, you think, oh, she's just warning her child that it might be cold and um, she might, they might want to bring a jacket or they might want to wear warm clothes or whatever, but it's not a preparation so, hey, it's cold out, guys. Let's make sure we got the gear we need ahead of time. It's not it's not a preparation of positivity. Secure is what it's about. It, trying to control the dialogue, trying to control you through setting it up ahead of time so that you already don't like the thing. So that you're already... And then, and then where do you have to go for looking to what the world should be about? Her. So they pre-program everything so that you look to them to, to ask what the world is, to ask how things should be. They're creating dependency on them through all of these manipulations. It's all about their own insecurity as a human being, as a mother, as whatever, because they need the focus on them. It is, it's, imp okay, so people say, can a, can a narcissist be a good mother? My answer is going to be pretty black and white here. No, and here's why. Everything is filtered through their, you know, ego and their own insecurities, their own need for attention, their own need for supply. How it's like any relationship with a narcissist. Can it ever be healthy? No, it can't because the dynamic of a relationship takes multiple people. It takes you and the other person or you and whoever's involved. In a family, the narcissistic mother controls the family through her narcissism through her controlling, through her gaslighting, through her manipulating, and all of the tactics every narcissist uses. And so therefore, none of these relationships, including your familial relationship, can be healthy until you separate from that narcissist and try and form 
relationships on individual basis with these with the other rest of your family and try and form that with the knowing that you've been programmed by the narcissistic person and you're gonna have to work really hard to have good sibling relationships to have good relationships with the non-toxic parent because it's everything that you've been taught is filtered through her narcissism she is loading your head full of programming that then is how you relate to everyone else in the world and they create loyalty binds so that your loyalty i have a whole video on loyalty binds please go watch it if you don't know what i'm referring to here but it's the bond it's it's an unhealthy loyalty attachment to another person based on things that are put into place guilt trips um um all kinds of things we could, you'd have it's a long <laughs> topic so go find that video i will try and link it as well somewhere on here so um it is it's so no, it can't be healthy. So what do you do? What do you do when you're in it? You're stuck. You're a kid. You're an adult now and you lived through it, whatever. You work to undo the programming and see her actions for what they are based on who she is. And then it has nothing to do with you. It has to do with her need for supply, her need to be the center of attention, her need to be controlling, her need to fill the role of a mother and do it in a way that everyone in the world thinks she's fantastic. For the rest of the world to see her as perfect in her, you know, you know how it is with them. You have the tools out there and you'd think, great, finally a, mar a narcissistic mother can have a template to how to at least fake it, right? But no, the problem is they take this information and just like they do when you go to therapy with them, they will use the information to twist it around to focus it back on themselves and then look like the good guy. So it's provable. So if they do something like, Say they're giving praise and say they have a golden child and they're giving praise. They won't allow the child to just have the experience of something that gives the child self pride and self validation. They validate the child like we are taught to do in modern parenting. Right. But they do it in a way that subtly turns it back to them. I'm so proud. Look how well you've done this thing that we worked on together. You know, whatever it is, they'll twist the words to somehow bring themselves into it. It's not just, wow, that's a great job. That's fantastic you did this thing. How do you feel about it? There's never a question of how do you feel about it because they can't do that. And if they do say that, it's still thrown back into you talk to me, you be my secret confidant. I'm the one that controls your emotional state. Does that make sense? They do it in a way it isn't. So they're so if they look at the book and they say and, and you say, Mom, why did you do this to me? They'll show you the book. They'll show you the information, the articles. They'll be like, go Google it. It's a good thing for me to praise you and give you validation. You see, they can twist everything because everything, everything that they do is filtered through the lens of narcissism. They can't act outside of it. They can only act from ego, from self-protection, from their own insecurities and from their own need to control everything and have everything come back to being about them. Even when they say things like it's for your well-being, it's for the child's well-being, what they mean is it's for my well-being, but it serves my relationship with my child. It's not about the child as an individual. Does that make sense? I hope because, and if you've experienced this, you know what I'm talking about. It's It can be very covert and very confusing because here you have this person you're supposed to look to as a mother, and and I don't know, I work with people in coaching a lot who have had narcissistic mothers, and this is kind of a theme I hear where they there's a conflict inside themselves. This is a sort of cognitive dissonance, right? Of but she's my mom. A narcissistic mother needs to have herself woven into your life. They need to constantly be drawing the attention back to themselves, even when you're off with your friends, when you're off at college, when you're even when you're at work, you know, when you're when you're married, they'll insert themselves in your marriage. They but see, then they can say, but family matters. Family is everything. Why wouldn't you talk to your mother? You see, it's always twisted in a way that makes it look like you're doing something wrong by feeling her invasion in your life and wanting it out. And it's so different than someone checking in with you like, hey, how you doing? Do you need something? Hey, how you doing? I just want to let you know, you know. They can say I love you in a way that feels like all narcissistic mothers. You don't think my mom's out to get me. You don't think my mom's all about herself. Who thinks that as a kid? 
you think I'm safe in mom's view. And the thing about narcissistic mothers is often they will create a world where you turn to them. They create the anxieties that you feel and then they become the source to fix those anxieties. It is a form of love bomb devalue. It's the same cycle. Give your kid anxieties over something and then be the person they turn to when they have those anxieties. What does that make mommy? Super important, super critical. So the one thing that can fix everything. So then you grow up and you think, well, my mom was always there helping me with, oh, wait a minute. She installed the buttons. She pushed the buttons. And then she pretended the buttons weren't installed by her and fixed the problem. She became, they create dependency. They create learned helplessness. They, they make children, they either do that or they push you away and make you grow yourself up. So in an escape goat situation, they may install the anxiety button, push on it. And then when you come to them, push harder on it and make you feel like it's your fault. And then you have to fix it. But you're still turning to them because their mom, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Lise Colucci, one of the life coaches over at queenbeing.com. Um, head over to Queen Being if you need any information or any help or any resources for recovering from a narcissist in your life. 